To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Okay, so as you know, I've been working on our well. Trying to bring it up to some sort of standard modernization, I guess. The well has been dirty for, well, as long as we've been here. Especially after when it rains. What I did was, and if you haven't seen the videos, go back and look for them, is I installed what's called a well packer. And the well packer goes down and PVC pipe sits on top of the well packer. And so what I did was I created a new well casing is basically what I did. So now my pump goes down into the well case about 30 feet. And then after that, it just drops right down into the bedrock, another 60 feet roughly and into water, the bedrock water. You don't want groundwater because groundwater gets dirty. So this will prevent all the water from flowing down into the well and all the dirty water getting down into it. So tomorrow is the big test. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain, 58% chance of rain it says. Not that I really want it to rain, but if it's got to rain, I guess uh, it'll be a good time to test this to make sure it works. I'm very nervous. I want to make sure it works, of course. But if it doesn't work now, we're just going to have to live with dirty water. Now I had a, a four inch pump in here and I think it was one horsepower. This one is a three inch pump and it's a three quarter inch horsepower. Now you can get on Google and you can convert horsepower into amps and watts. This one is 900 watts. Now, just in case you are curious, I've talked about this before. If you ever wanna know what your watts are, your tags on your refrigerator or on this pump will tell you what it is, but you gotta know a little math. So you take the volts. So like your plug-in in your house is 110 volts. And then you look at the tag and it tells you how many amps it has. And it's uh, nine amps, okay? So nine times 110 is actually 990. I said 900, but it's 990 watts. So 110 volts times 10 amps is 1,000 watts basically, right? I know that my pump is 990 watts. My generator here is 2,000 watts. So you would think my generator could easily run this pump. And it can, but startup is a whole different scenario. On startup, AC pumps require, on average, it's not really a true statement, I don't know where it comes from, but it requires double the watts. So if you have a thousand watt pump, it means when it starts up, it's gonna take 2,000 watts. Well, that's, it's not exactly true. It probably takes 2,500 watts. There's really no way to tell unless you have a, a voltmeter and an amp meter and all that you could t test it with. So this generator struggles to start it up. And so I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Okay, so you should be able to hear the sound. It's all, you know, running at one pace. But when I plug this in, you're gonna hear it rev down and rev back up. Okay, so I'm sure you heard it rev down or, you know, try to get some power. So what that tells me is it's maxing out the wattage. Now, once the pump started, then it went back down to 990 watts. So now the generator can easily handle it because like I said, it's 2000 watts. So you, now you see that I'm pumping out some water. Now you heard a little bit of a tone change. That's just because it's not having to use as much energy. Now another option you could do is you could get a solar powered DC direct current well pump. You can buy them, they're a little bit more expensive. Now the difference between AC and DC, AC is the stuff you plug into your house. So like you saw here, that's a regular plug-in that you plug into your house that plugs into the generator. That's AC, alternating current. Now, your car is DC, 12 volts actually. Now these pumps, I think you have to get those in 24 volt. I like 12 volt because it's easy to adapt to your car. I can literally take my car and charge my batteries that run my house through an inverter. So for me to get a DC pump, it's not really worth it for me because it would be extra money 
it would be 24 volts and I already have solar panels. Now, if you had a farm with no electric and you're raising cows on it or maybe a garden or, you know, whatever, and you had a well on it, the DC well might be good for it because you wouldn't need any other electric than the well. And so your pa panels would be charging up your battery and then when you got to the farm, you could use your water. But here I have a thousand watts per hour of solar panels. These solar panels can easily run my well pump. And in order to do that, I have to have what's called an inverter. An inverter changes DC electric, car electric, into AC electric, house electric. This is where my electric gear is stored, is inside the camper. We lived here for a while, well, for four years. Now we're remodeling it so it doesn't look very good. We've gotten the bed out. We're gonna, oops, we're gonna change this into a shed. I've got batteries, but this is an inverter. So my solar panels are currently producing 14.6 volts. And right now we got uh, 1.9 amps. That means to me that the batteries are charged. The 1.9 amps is probably my computer is running right now. So that's the only thing that's being drawn from it. So this is the inverter and this wire right here runs my entire house. It runs the refrigerator and the computers. We don't have a lot of electric that we use. I've got four lead acid batteries that work perfectly for me. And I know people are gonna say, oh no, you can't do that. Um, I've got hundreds of videos, it seems like, how I absolutely love Walmart lead acid batteries. They last forever. They're a great battery. Just gotta know how to take care of them. So this is what changes the electric from battery to house electric. Battery electric to house electric. This is a thousand watts. So just like my generator is a thousand watts, running watts, it has 2000 watt peak. So when I ordered this a year ago, I thought, oh, this would be perfect. It's the same as my generator. My generator can handle the well pump. Why wouldn't this? So I ordered it, but when I got it, it would not run the well pump. So what you have to think about is the generator is running off mechanical. So it probably can produce a little bit more electric than what it's advertising. So it says 2000 watts peak. It probably can produce 2,500 watts because you got that engine really working like a lawnmower. It can you know, cut the grass just fine, but when you hit the heavy patch of grass, the, the lawnmower really starts to bear down. When you get to the inverter, this is more like a computer and it, it knows when it's overloaded. It does is it sounds an alarm. It does not produce any more electricity and you got some sort of code that's being displayed here. I don't know what the code means. So today I'm getting a 2000 watt inverter, 4000 peak. So it'd be double what my generator is, it's double what this is. The thing is, is I'm not going to run the, that inverter all the time. I'm only gonna run that inverter when I'm running the well. And the reason is, is because the inverter burns power even if it's not doing anything. You can have everything shut off. If the inverter's on, it's still burning power. The bigger the inverter, the more power it burns. Well, I don't want to burn all that power. At nighttime when I'm not running anything, maybe the refrigerator kicks on every now and then, I want a smaller inverter. Because I'm not always going to run the, the well pump off the inverter. And the reason I'm not going to do that is it pulls a lot of power. So I could only run it on sunny days. A cloud came over, the batteries would start to discharge and the panels wouldn't have a chance to charge it back up. So I'm just going to use it as a backup. Water is so critical that if the generator went down for some reason, I still want the ability to get water. I'm gonna install the inverter and we're gonna see if it will power this pump. Okay, so I've turned it on. You can see it's producing the same amount of watts as the other one. It says 14.6 uh, and the other one says 14.6. So it's, it's on, it's working. So we're gonna plug in the well pump and see how it does. All right, so here goes nothing. Yep, you can see that it's starting to pull some, uh, yep, 12 volts. It's pulling 11.9, yep. So it's pulling some wattage. So we'll go up there and see if the water's running. So look at this. We got water, no generator. The solar panels are pulling the water. Fantastic. Now the problem is, is I can't do much with it today because you probably can see that it's pretty cloudy. It's going to pull mostly from the battery. That's why you saw the drop in wattage from 14.6 to 
down to 12.3, 11.9 because the solar panels aren't putting out enough energy. So I'll have to un unplug it so the solar panels can continue to charge it. See, we're already down to 11.4. Pretty soon the inverter will shut off because it can't pull that much. Okay, so I'm here looking at what the solar panels are putting out right now. Now remember, they normally can put out about 50 amps. The battery's starting to charge back up. We're back up to 13.1, which is really good. And we're putting out about, and we're putting out 14 amps. So significantly reduced from the, the cloudiness. Yeah, see, as soon as the sun pops back up, we went up to 18 amps. So it's fluctuating quite a bit based on the cloudiness. So this is gonna work. I'm really glad I got this. Now I gotta remember, I gotta shut it off because this is just gonna waste power. So I hope I can inspire you to find backup plans when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.